All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this device. It's made by a company called Moo Karif. <laughs> I don't know how to say that, so I'm not even really going to try it. But uh, you can pick this up for about 40 bucks on Amazon, and I'll have a link below if you choose to do that. Just taking a quick look at it. It did not come with any instructions, and it just came in a plain brown box. But uh, it says UHF and VHF two-way splitter, 136 to 520 megahertz. And what's interesting about that is it supports or covers the 2 meter and 70 centimeter and the 220 uh, band. But uh, what you do is, is that you have an input that goes in here and then it splits that signal. Now, if you take a look down here, you'll see our two outputs are marked negative 3 dB. And so for those who don't know, a negative 3 dB loss in signal quality is 50%. And this makes total sense because I would expect that if I have uh, 100 watts going in here, I'm going to get 50 out of each one of these. And that 50 is half my power. And so that makes total sense. And the use case for this was really sharing an antenna. So on the input side, we can have an antenna outside. And then I can have two different radios here that are listening. Now, one of the things that we concern ourselves about is called um, isolation, port isolation. So that means if I'm going to inject a signal into this, the wrong direction, uh, if I'm going to inject a signal in here, how much of that signal is going to bleed over and come out here? And I'm guessing I went somewhere around negative 60 dB, um, which is a lot. And that, that way I could attenuate a strong signal if I was going to... If I was going to do that, if I didn't have that strong of attenuation, what could happen is, is if I inject a signal into one of these, some of that bleeds over and comes out here and then damages the front end of the device uh, that is running in parallel into here. And I bought this because I wanted to use it as a splitter and a combiner. And so a combiner is when you take two signals, you inject them in and they are mixed together into one signal and come out here. The reason I want to do that is I want to be able to take two different signals, inject them into a radio and see if that radio has adjacent signal rejection is what it's called. Or if it desensitizes or overloads the front end of the radio. I'm not 100% sure we're going to be able to test that in the way I want to. So what we're going to do today is we're going to hook this up to our Nano VNA, which I have right here. And this is calibrated to run from 130 to 100 or to 525 megahertz. So that'll give us a pretty broad sweep. And uh, this is hooked up to the computer. So we're going to look at this through the computer's eye. And I just talked a whole lot. So let me get this thing set up and we'll start doing our tests. Real quick, I just wanted to show that this device uses an SO239 connector all the way across the board. So for some of these tests, we're going to be using these SO239 to SMA adapters to make it nice and easy. Okay, so for the first test, what we're going to do is we're going to use our Nano VNA to inject a signal out of channel zero, and that signal is going to come into our input port here. On the two output ports, I have the adapters I just showed and 50 ohm loads. So we're going to see what I'd like to see is a one-to-one -one SWR across that entire uh, sweep. I doubt we're going to get that good, but we should get close. And um, I think the rating on this was like 1.3 or 1.4 SWR. Uh, again, it didn't come with any documentation, so that would have been something I saw on YouTube, and we don't trust those specifications anyway, so we do our own testing. So let's jump over to Nano VNA Saver, which we are monitoring through this USB-C cable. Okay, so here is Nano VNA Saver, and if you take a look in the upper left-hand corner, what you'll see is, is that we have a calibration and a sweep set up. We have 3,030 points, so we're doing... 30 segments across our span of 390 megahertz, and that gives us a data point every 128 kilohertz, which isn't too bad. Uh, our sweep's going to run from 130 to 520 megahertz, and I'm going to hit the sweep button now, and we're going to see what we get. And you can look at the progress bar, and you can see that uh, right now we're about 35% done. And the chart here on the lower side, you can see our sweep output as, uh, as we continue to finish this. And we've got a little bit of a stubble, a little bit of bumpiness down here in around 300 uh, megahertz through around 350. And then it looks like it picks up again somewhere around 4, 410, 415 and runs all the way through our sweep. 
And I have a marker set up, uh, this red marker right here at 146.48. Now, I did type in 146.52, but that is the closest data point. And uh, when we take a look at this, it says our VSWR is one-to-one -one at that frequency. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at somewhere on the 70 centimeter band. So... So when I type in 446 megahertz, uh, it, it uh, rounds to its closest data point, which is 445.964. And when we take a look, it says our VSWR up here is one to one. So that is fantastic. Now we're gonna set up and we are going to measure the SWR into the two uh, output ports. Okay, so we're set up for our next test. And just to go over everything, here's our 9 VNA channel zero. We're gonna be shooting a signal out. It's coming in here into the output port. And then we move the load over to the input port, 50 ohm load here, and make sure to keep a 50 ohm load here. Okay, what I wanna do now is I wanna switch over to Nano VNA saver. All right, the sweep is done and that looks pretty dang on good. Our marker is already in the 70 centimeter band and it is saying our VSWR is one to one, which is fantastic. Okay, and then after changing our marker to 146.480, and you can see that our SWR is one to one, which is fantastic. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch the output ports and test the SWR there as well. Okay, so for this test, we have the Nano VNA sending the signal out channel zero. It's gonna measure on our reflections back. We moved this from this port to that port, and then we moved the load from this port to that port. And we have our 50 ohm termination on the input as we did with the last test. Let me switch over to Nano VNA saver and run the sweep. Okay, we're back at Nano VNA saver and I'm hitting the sweep button now. And the sweep is done, and our SWR is one to one on the two meter band. So let me go ahead and let me change this one more time to 446, and that's going to round to, or it's going to go to the closest data point of 445.964, and our SWR is one to one. So this passes all the SWR input tests, which is fantastic. Okay, so what we have set up now is we are going to test the isolation between these two ports. And that means how much of one signal coming in is bleeding over to the other side. Uh, at the top of this, we still have our 50 ohm load. I think it's important that you leave that here. But the signal is going to come out channel zero and it's going to go through this wire and it's going to go into this port and into this device. And I suspect we'll pick something up here, which is going to be detected down here on channel one. So let me go over to Nano VNA Saver. Okay, so here we are in Nano VNA Saver, and what we need to do is change our chart. So if you look here, this chart says S11 VSWR, and that's just an SWR measurement. So I go down here to the lower right-hand corner, I hit display setup, and then I'm just going to change this to an S21 gain. And what this means is that how much of a signal that you're seeing out of channel zero and into channel one. Let me go ahead and close this. Let's run the sweep and see what we see. All right, the test is done and our first marker is over here and it is at uh, 445.96. Uh, and if we take a look up here, it's saying our S21 gain is negative 34, which is pretty low, and that might work for our use case. I think we're going to try it, not in this video, in a different video, and, uh, and see how it works. But I would not use this if I was uh, transmitting larger signals uh, out of one radio, and I had two radios hooked up uh, to use this as a, as a combiner. You know, I, just, I just wouldn't do it. But I think this would work fine for... SWR, I'm sorry, for SDR receive. So let's set the test up and we'll test the isolation in the other direction. Oh, I forgot. We want to test 14652. And when we do that, we move the marker over to here and you can see our S21 gain is only negative 24.475. So that's even a little bit more concerning. Um, Maybe we'll test it with some cheap Baofeng radios. <laughs> That's probably what we'll do, um, but we'll wait and see. 
Okay, so what we've done is we've just switched these two ports. Everything else remains the same as the last test. We still have our 50 ohm load on there. Let me switch over to Nano VNA Saver and we'll see what we see. Okay, so we're back at Nano VNA Saver and taking a look, we have our marker down here at uh, 445.964 in the 70 centimeter band. And then we take a look at that, our S21 gain is negative 33.862. So it went up a little bit, but negligible amount. Let's come over here and check what we are on the two meter band, 146.52. Our markers moved over here and this one has gone down ever so slightly at negative 24.519. You know, again, I'm not 100% sure I'm sold on how much isolation is here being a good thing for us to do injection as a combiner. But uh, as a splitter, it seems like it's working okay. What we want to do now is we want to run the signal through and see if we're getting any loss uh, from injecting a signal into the output and measuring on the input. Let me get that set up and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so for this test, what we've done... Signal is going to come out of the nano VNA. It's going to go into this output port, and then it's going to come out this input port. It's going to come down. And it's going to go in here. We're going to see if we detect any loss. We've moved our 50 ohm load here, and let's run the test. Okay, we're back at nano VNA saver. Let's go ahead and run the sweep. It would appear that we have around 3 dB of loss, and I think that that makes sense. It's a little messy towards the higher end of the band, but uh, right here at 146.48, which is close as we can get to 146.52, we have a negative 3.4 dB loss. Let's check and see what we have in the 70 centimeter band. And we take a look there, we are negative 3.677. So I think that's okay. Let's switch the two ports on the output side and run the test again. Okay, all we did is just switch these two connections. Everything else has remained the same. Let's head over to Nano VNA Saver, and we are gonna click the sweep button. And it looks like our sweep is reporting a little bit better results. So our marker is still in the 70 centimeter band, and we are at 3.532, which is pretty close to where we were. Let's go over here and change this to 146.52. And we are negative 3.353, which again is a little bit better there. Okay, we are going to do another test. We're going to inject the signal from the input side and see if this is really 3 dB of loss on the output sides. Okay, bending this coaxial cable like this is probably not a good idea. But for this test, signal is going to come out of the nano VNA. It's going to come all the way around here and it's going to go in the input. Here we have a 50 ohm termination, so it's not really gonna do anything. And then we have a negative three dB expected output on this. And we're gonna measure that here on channel one. Let's go over to Nano VNA Saver and see what we get. All right, here we are Nano VNA Saver and I'm clicking the sweep button. Okay, the sweep's complete and this is looking even better. So when we take a look at marker number one at 146.52, we have negative 2.33 dB. So that's better than the specified negative three dB output. Let's go ahead and change this over to the 70 centimeter band. And it's negative 3.718, which I actually think is a little bit worse than when we went the other direction. All right, we're gonna switch the two output ports and we're gonna run that test. Okay, all we've done is switch these two ports right here. And let's go over to Nano VNA Saver and run our test. All right, I'm clicking the sweep button. All right, and the sweep's done. So we take a look at our marker data. For the 70 centimeter band, what we see is negative 3.617, which is pretty dang close to where we were last time. Let's go over here, 146.52, and we are negative 2.343, which is pretty dang close to where we were last time. All right, we just tested the heck out of this thing. Uh, taking a look at it and considering the results, uh, I think it would work fine as a splitter. Again, you could use an antenna here and then two receive radios like SDR dongles or something like that here. Keep in mind, you are going to get a little bit of loss. It says 3 dB, but we were less than that on 2 meters and a little bit higher than that on 70 centimeters. 
but that would probably be negligible. It's not something I would worry about. So it looks like it's fit for use that way. Now, what I wanted to do, as I mentioned, is I wanted to inject two signals in here. And again, we had about 3 dB, give or take. I think it went from 2.5 to, to 3.5 from 2 meters to 70 centimeters on the output. And I guess that would be fine for me. I don't really have a problem with that. What I'm concerned about is the isolation between the two ports. I think we were around 25, negative 25 dB on 2 meters and around negative 35 dB on 70 centimeters. And I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not, but what I think we're going to do is use tiny SAs to inject signals into here and see what we can receive on a Balfang or something like that in a future video. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching, everybody. It's greatly appreciated.